everybody. Today's subject is one that every flame worker encounters and struggles with. How to determine a proper and fair base price for your work. A base price is the minimum sustainable price you can sell a glass art object for that will allow you to support your business and yourself. In this video, I will go into some depth about what you should be considering when coming up with a base price and how to make sure you don't under or overprice your work. I understand that many of you have supplemental sources of income, either from a gainfully employed partner or another business venture or simply a side job. Everyone tries to make ends meet using whatever means you have available. But for this video and for the sake of simplicity, I will be assuming that your flame working business is your only source of income. Your net income will be the total gross revenue your business generates minus your total gross expenses. That sounds simple enough, but in reality, many artists fail to grasp just how much their business costs to run. They fail to see the big picture because their business practices are scattered and disorganized, and this costs them significantly. It is vital that you find a way to accurately track all of your business income and expenses without using up a ton of your time. In the good old days, I used what I call the paper bag accounting method. I'd toss all my receipts from the year into a paper bag and at the end of the year, dump them out onto the living room floor and one by one, enter them by hand into a ledger book. I used an adding machine to get the totals. Needless to say, it was a grueling task that I not only hated, but that I knew was not very accurate and was probably costing me money. Fortunately, today we have computers and software that will do this job for us. The industry standard is into its QuickBooks, but there are inexpensive or free alternatives such as Wave that will do almost the same thing. When choosing a software to do your books, you need to make sure it will do these things. Number one, connect to your bank and download transactions automatically. Number two, generate accurate reports such as profit and loss and balance sheet. Number three, have the ability to file and pay payroll taxes for you. And number four, have the ability to integrate with a third party tax preparation program such as TurboTax. Setting up one of these online bookkeeping programs will save you an enormous amount of time and money, and so they are well worth their cost. Recently, my preferred software, QuickBooks, has gone to an online subscription model. The cheapest one, Simple Start, costs $30 a month and is completely adequate for tiny businesses such as ours tend to be. On the other hand, Wave is completely free unless you need their payroll service or to accept payments using their pay portals. Both will do the job well. If you do not have these or similar programs set up to manage your books, I strongly urge you to do so right away. There are links in the description to both QuickBooks and Wave. I'll wait. Okay, now that you have your bookkeeping program set up, and have learned to categorize your income and expenses, you can use this data to determine how much it costs to run your business. Income will primarily be sales, but can also include things like rebates, refunds, and reimbursements. Expenses will fall into several categories. Number one, costs of goods sold, glass, gas, oxygen, and other direct material costs. Number two, overhead. Rent, utilities, maintenance, repairs, liability insurance, etc. All the stuff it costs to have a space to conduct your business. Number three, other stuff. It's the other stuff you are most likely to miss. If it shows up on the deduction portion of your tax return, it's an expense and you should be factoring it into your calculations. Here are a few things that often get overlooked. Depreciation of assets, refunds and returns, home office deductions, personal auto use deductions, insurance and property taxes if you work at home, advertising and promotion. And this is by no means a comprehensive list. There are many more. Bookkeeping software 
will give you the means to track these and other expenses accurately and allow you to see the big picture. Okay, now that we can see the big picture, let's see how we can use it to accurately determine a base price for your work. Referring to your profit and loss report, you can immediately see the gross income, total expenses, and the net income. These are really the only numbers you need. The fact is that the items that you make and sell have to pay for everything, but it's the profit alone that supports you and your lifestyle. So you have to have a handle on the big picture of your personal finances too. Sadly, many of us do not. Do you use software to track your personal income and expenses? You should. Intuit's Quicken does this well in the same way that QuickBooks does for your business. In fact, if your business is simple enough, you can utilize one software like Quicken to do both tasks. But even in the absence of software, you can simply download 12 months of bank statements for your personal accounts to get an idea of what your cost of living is. Total up your rent or mortgage, bills, debt payments, and daily living expenses such as groceries, beer, and gas. You should always add a little bit for fun and entertainment because, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Finally, make sure you add a little for savings and emergencies and you have a sound baseline for what you need to survive. And here's the kicker. The total amount of business expenses plus the total cost of living is the minimum your business must earn to sustain both itself and you. Your specific artistic glass art object has to pay for it all. Now, how much should you charge for this precious piece of glass? Well, here's a sample formula. Take the total cost number, that's the business expenses plus the cost of living expenses, and divide it by 50. That is your weekly minimum that you have to earn. Now take that number and divide by five. That is your daily minimum that you have to earn. Now take your daily minimum to earn and divide it by the number of glass art objects you can make in an eight hour workday. That is your minimum wholesale price. Retail is double that price. I'll cover the difference between wholesale and retail marketing in a future video. So here is the bottom line. If your glass art object will sell readily for that price, you are good to go. If it will bring in more than that price, well, more power to you. But if it will not sell for that price reliably, it is not marketable and should be abandoned or redesigned. Now, whenever you make a new piece or come up with a new design, the first thing you say to yourself is, how does this fit into my base price structure? If it takes a day to make something, you know how much the minimum is that you have to charge for it. If you can make four of this new design in a day, you know how much they have to sell for to meet your daily average minimum needs. It's simple math that you can do in your head. This may come as dismaying news to some of you, but it is the reality of your situation. If you're working your butt off and selling everything you make, but still not making ends meet, this is likely the reason. Fortunately, this data also gives you some ways you can adjust to make your glass art object provide you with the support you need. Here are five examples. You can raise the price. The obvious issue here is that the market may not support the new higher price, but if it will, this method will work. You can reduce production time. The issue here is that you might already be making the piece as fast as you can, and you may not want to work in a rushed manner. But if there's a way to streamline production without compromising quality, this is a viable approach. You can design new work that does fit the bill. The issue here is that no artist is comfortable having their creativity restrained by financial considerations. That said, you do what you have to do to survive. If making 10 production pieces a week will give you the opportunity to be truly creative, then it may be worth it. You could reduce expenses. You should be doing this anyway, but if you find any areas where you can lower costs, that obviously will make it easier for your glass art object to support you. You can supplement your income. Your home studio offers you opportunities to do things like 
renting space to other workers, or offering other services like teaching, you may find that your studio and your talents allow you to consider other sources of income. You should not consider working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year as a viable way to make up for inadequate income. Burnout is real and should be avoided at all costs. You want to love your work and enjoy working. The rule is work to live, not live to work. For those of you who think this is kind of a corporate way to place a value on art, well, you're right, it is. But it is the most practical way to define the minimum base price you need to charge in order to survive. But this does not mean that you should treat your glass art object like a mass-produced item. It is not. It is an original design, often one of a kind, which places it in a class of its own. This natural built-in scarcity should be factored in. But the place to do this is in marketing, not in base pricing. And that is a subject for another video entirely. In conclusion, base pricing is where you want to start to ensure that your business model is viable from the beginning. From there, you can develop more complex art pieces directed at more exclusive markets, as well as other strategies for selling your work. I hope this video will help you to structure your base pricing so that you have a more profitable and sustainable glass art business. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.